Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have another playing with makeup, wedding makeup trial type of video for you guys. I feel like I said that I was going to do these very frequently and they have not been frequent whatsoever. So I'm so sorry for that. But today we're going to be playing with some makeup, trying to achieve like a bridal look and hopefully I'll come across the products that I'm really, really happy with. Fingers crossed. I am trying out a new primer, which is really, really exciting. And then I think I know what foundation I'm going to use, but let's just jump into it and let's see what I come up with and let's see if I'm happy with it. So now I'm just going to go in with my Wonder Glow, which I haven't used before. Oh, it's very sparkly. Yeah, honestly, I really wish that the Hollywood Flawless Filter was in the same packaging as this because it would be so much easier for me to use and it wouldn't feel like it would take as long. And I got a mozzie bite on my face, which is just great. Love that. And I have a pimple coming up here. So that's just marvelous. <laughs> I absolutely love the glow that, that gives to the skin. To be honest, I just absolutely love a glowy primer. You know what? I'm, I'm going to layer a little bit of the Hollywood Flawless Filter, but in the shade Light, I'm just going to do it on the high points of my face. I really want to try the Auric like version of this because I love how it's in a pump. You can definitely notice a difference between the Hollywood Flawless Filter and the like Wonder Glow. Like the Wonder Glow is a lot more subtle, while the Hollywood Flawless Filter is a lot more, I guess, intense. But they're both really, really pretty. But I wanted to play around with the Wonder Glow because I wanted to see if I wanted to use that one on the day or not. So for foundation, I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I'm pretty set on this one just because I think I like the color match of 7.5 neutral a lot more than my makeup atelier ones i don't know i feel like it just matches my fake tan a little bit better so i did use a new fake tan i used the coco and eve fake tan in the shade medium and i've really been liking it but i've had it on for a few days now and it has lightened quite a lot so i'm going to mix 7.5 with shade 3 neutral and i'm going to apply that to my face don't ask me why i've just rubbed it all through my fingers and then applying it to my face but that's okay. So I'm just using my Zoeva flat top brush and just pressing the product into my skin. I think the reason why I'll choose this one over the Makeup Atelier, even though I absolutely love the Makeup Atelier, is because I don't really have, I think, the nicest color for me when I'm using this tan. And I really like the color that I am with the Coco and Eve tanner. Like, I'm sure if I was able to go into store and actually, like, check out all the shades for the makeup atelier one i could find one that's quite similar to this i'm sure of it but i'm trying to not buy like too much makeup or like too much of like the same makeup so i've already got that foundation so that's pretty much like maybe like slightly over a pump and it's done my whole face i am just going to go in with a tiny bit more and just pat it over my dark spots that are here and also just push a little bit underneath my eye as well but yeah, I just absolutely love the shade match of this one. And this one, I get a really, really good wear time out of it as well. But I'm definitely going to put that to the test today because it is quite early. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. So I will be able to test this for pretty much like a full day's wear. Um, originally, I was planning on having like an afternoon wedding. But from the sounds of it, I might have to change my wedding to be like a morning wedding and literally like have five people. So that's great. But it is what it is. At the end of the day, my main thing is I want to get married. So I'm glad that I'll be able to give this a really, really good wear test today because it's currently 9 o'clock and I think this is about the time that I would actually do my makeup on the day. I'm just going to go over my face with my Beauty Blender body and just really press everything into the skin just to make sure that there is no streak marks, which to be honest, I can't see any, but I just want to make sure that this is like pushed into the skin and like it doesn't look cakey or anything like that. And honestly, I don't feel like enough people talk about the Beauty Blender body. Like, it's kind of like a flat Beauty Blender. And to be honest, like, you guys might only ever see me use, like, black Beauty Blenders for, like, my concealer and stuff. Honestly, I love the black Beauty Blenders so much more than the pink ones. They are, like, they're a part of the Pro line, but I feel like the colors don't bleed in the black ones. And the fact that the color bleeds at all in the pink ones just really freak me out. Moving on with corrector, I'm going to be using my MAC Pro Conceal palette and I'm going to use a little bit of this peachy tone up the top or this like a salmon-y tone and I'm going to apply that directly under my eyes with my finger. 
I really want to try Bobbi Brown Peach underneath my eyes in a makeup trial because I used to use that all the time and I just picked up another one. I'm now going to use my Fenty eye primer just on my eyes because I actually forgot. Ideally, I should have put this on when I put on the Wonder Glow, but that's okay. So I'm going to use the Kevin Aquan Central Skin Enhancer in SX06. You can tell this is well loved because it's got a very big dent in it. I absolutely love this stuff and it just lasts and lasts. So I'm just going to pat that underneath my eyes. It is expensive, but honestly, a little bit does go a long way. And I put that only under my under eye area. I haven't used that to highlight or anything like that because I feel like it would just be way too much coverage. So I'm going to be using my Tarte Shape Tape over the top. I really like using a concealer like meshed with the Kevin Aquan because I feel like it does like kind of like water it down a little bit. I don't even know like the right terminology for it, but I feel like it does kind of like melt it down a little bit easier. And I'm just going to highlight the high points of my face. This seems like a lot, but literally like my doe foot applicator is so dry on this stuff. There is honestly like hardly any product left. Like I'm literally scraping the sides. Yeah. So right now I honestly don't even know if my wedding can go ahead. It's actually really quite frustrating and really scary because when we decided on our wedding date, like we were like surely like with two years, COVID will not be a thing. Like surely. But yeah, at the moment, we don't even know if the wedding can go ahead because as the rules are right now in September, we won't be able to, like we're still at like a stay at home order. So we can't actually leave to go and get married, which absolutely sucks. And any weddings in New South Wales can only be five guests. So I don't know. It's really, really sad to be honest with you, but it's just one of those things, I guess. But I feel like that's my approach to everything. It's kind of like, it is what it is and that's it. But it's not. It's actually really, really like upsetting. But anyway, so I'm going to skip cream contour because I honestly just don't think I'm very good at it. And I kind of want to see what I look like with just like bronzer and like building up the depth that way. And I'm going to be using the Beauty Bakery Flower to set my under eyes because I'm not going to cream contour. So I'm going to move on to the next step. Just going to pat out any of the creasing that's underneath my eyes. I'm going to set one side with a brush and then I'm going to set one side with a beauty blender and see what I like more. So I'm just going to pat this underneath my eyes. And then the other eye, I'm going to be trying to use a beauty sponge. This is the one from Flower Beauty. I'm just going to pat that underneath my eyes. I was watching one of my old YouTube videos and I actually saw that I wasn't using a sponge to set my under eye. So I was like, why did I start doing that again? So that's why I kind of wanted to do the two to kind of compare them. And to be honest, I kind of did a bad job because I shouldn't have used this much powder. But anyway, it is what it is. Yeah, I think I much prefer it with a brush. And I definitely, oh, I don't know. I feel like I needed to add more corrector, at least straight off the bat. But who knows if I'll change my mind after like everything's all done and settled in and stuff like that. I'm just going to grab a little bit of the powder and I'm going to set my eyelids as well. I'm just going to set the highlighted points of my face just with a bit more of the concentrated powder. I don't know why I do that, but I feel like it just kind of like keeps that area a bit lighter than the rest of my face. I don't think that I'm going to test how these like makeup products like go in flash just because I was reading this blog post once and it really makes a lot of sense where like wedding photographers don't use flash like they actually bring their own lighting setup so i don't know i feel like i don't really care how my makeup looks like in the flash just because like there won't be any flash like used professionally and at the end of the day those are probably going to be the photos that i keep like not to say that i'm going to like delete any photos that are not professional but like i feel like those are the ones that will actually like be hung around like the house and like i don't know like i feel like those will be like the staple ones that kind of like get remembered if that makes any sense i'm going to do my brows off camera just because you've seen me do it a million times i'm just going to use my abh dip brow and i will be back okay eyebrows are on i did them ever so slightly thicker than i normally do like i kind of either go for this eyebrow shape or like slightly thinner but i feel like i feel more youthful with like a slightly thicker brow i was looking back at my old videos and oh my goodness i used to do my brows like really really big at one stage too big for like how i prefer now but i really like this size so i will try and aim for like a slightly thicker brow so i'm gonna go in with my old faithful this is mac wedge i used it in a recent video i think it was like a get ready with me video also just as a by the way do you guys like those get ready with me videos because i really like filming them because 
they're the types of videos that I like to try and find and watch, like the videos where people are just getting ready and there's no sound in the background. You can just kind of like look over and just see someone doing their makeup. And like worst case, if I don't like the music, I just put their music on mute and listen to my own. Um, the reason why I like that is because when I'm getting ready, like when I'm not like filming a video or anything, I like to watch what other people do. I don't know. But anyway, let me know if you like them or not. I'm just putting this all through my crease. I think there must have been something on this brush because this wasn't a clean brush that made it a little bit darker than normal, but that's okay. But yeah, you can tell that I absolutely love this shadow so much. Like I've been using MAC Wedge for absolutely years. It's honestly one of my favorite single shadows. Like if you were to ask me like one singular color, this is definitely one of them. Like it just adds a lot of like depth to the eye and it can be like one of those like one and done shades if you like a matte color. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit of Lorac Taupe. I'm just going to put that on the outer corner and kind of like blend it up a little bit. I'm really glad that I was always like planning on doing my own makeup because now it seems like I might even have to do my own hair. Like I don't think that I can actually have like anyone help me get ready. So I'm glad that I'm already like prepared for that. But yeah, so I have no idea what I'm going to do for my hair. Honestly, if it comes closer to the wedding and I need to do my own hair, I'm going to buy a Dyson Airwrap. Like, I know that sounds really, really dramatic, but I cannot do my hair to save my life. I'm glad that I have a best friend who kind of knows about hair, but not even really, but she can at least help me curl it or something. I don't even know. For my, like, shimmer color on my eyelid, I think I'm going to use Ofra Bliss. So I'm going to try and apply it with my finger because I was doing it with like a glitter glue base but I don't know if that's going to be too intense so I'm going to try with my finger on one eye without any base down and see how that looks actually you know what this is really nice I might just do it like this just because I don't want it to be like a super intense look like I want it to be like really subtle and like natural looking I guess I'm just going to do the same to the other eye I'm going to go in with a tiny little bit of NARS Barley and I'm just going to apply that to the outer portion of my eye. I really want to get some more of these NARS shadows. I think there's this one shade that is in stock on Mecca at the moment. It's in the shade Sophia and it looks absolutely stunning. I kind of want to pick it up, but I'm also trying to save money like with certain things. But to be honest, knowing me, I'll probably just end up filming this video and then ordering it. I think I'm just going to grab a little bit more wedge and I'm just going to put it more so like in this part of my eye because it almost feels like there's no shadow there anymore. Like there is, but you just can't really see it. So I'm just going to bring it up a little bit higher. I'm going to curl my lashes using the MAC eyelash curler. Honestly, I had to ditch my old eyelash curler, that, that like yellowy goldy one, because honestly... Like, I was traumatized from when my eyelash got caught that time and I was actually stuck. Like, it was one of the most painful, like, you wouldn't think something so little would be so painful, but imagine, like, someone, like, just tugging at one single eyelash. Like, so painful. And the worst part was I couldn't even free myself because I couldn't see because it was, like, literally, like, this close to my eye, so I couldn't actually see the problem. It was terrifying. I'm going to go in with my Magic Act lash primer honestly for a small little size this one honestly you get so much product and so much use out of it i don't use it all the time though like i will admit just because we've been in lockdown so i really only use it for videos at the moment but when i actually like go about like my day-to-day -day life like even like the full size it lasts me such a long time so i'm just using my tarte opening act lash primer honestly i absolutely love this stuff I currently have a sample size at the moment because it came with an eyelash curler that I got. It was actually the eyelash curler that got my eyelash stuck, but anyway. But yeah, I absolutely love this eye primer. It's so good. Like, I've tried other ones in the past, like the Jane Iredale one, the Dior one. The Dior one was okay, but I really didn't like the brush. I much prefer, like, the natural bristle brushes over the plastic brushes. That's just my personal opinion because I really like having a lot of bristles, like, densely compacted. I might start contouring the face while I let my eye primer dry. So I'm going to be using my Chocolate Soleil Milk Chocolate Bronzer. And I'm just going to contour my face. I really love the tone of this bronzer. Like, I think that's why I love it so much. Like, it's just a beautiful, neutral tone. It's not really too bronzy. Like, if you were fair, then this would work well for you as well, I think. But for me, because I am, like, a bit more tanned, or fake tanned, I should say, it just acts as a beautiful, like 
contour shade and it kind of like mimics like actual shadows without being like overly gray like it's not like the kevin aquan like sculpting powder or anything like that like that one i feel like is very very gray toned and i personally don't like that on me but i also don't like anything way too warm either i will be having my hair down on the day so i guess like a lot of it shouldn't matter actually i don't know if it's gonna be pinned back or not I need to order a hair accessory because I feel like my hair is going to be really, really plain without it, but I don't even know what to buy. Like the ones that I like are like $600 for a hair piece. Like I'm not paying $600 for no hair piece. And I'm just going to heavily contour like underneath my chin because I've eaten way too many um, desserts and sweets and just pigged out over the whole course of lockdown. Okay, I'm going to use my Emco Beauty Lash Extend and I'm going to apply my mascara. Great, I got mascara there and I got it on my eyelid as well. Honestly, I feel like that happens to me like most days that I put on mascara. So I'm hoping to the mascara gods that that does not happen to me on my wedding day. Like honestly, look at my lashes. Like you guys see how my lashes look all the time and... Honestly, like they look so good when I use that primer. So I'm going to apply my lashes. So these are from Model Rock. They're just like beautiful wispy lashes. I absolutely love them. Okay. I think when I do these next time, I'm definitely not going to go as hard out on the lashes, on the upper lashes. I think I'm just going to curl them and put mascara just so they are quite thin. Just because you can really tell the difference between my natural lashes and and the fake lashes today. I don't know why that's really strange because it normally doesn't happen. And then I'm just going to use the spoolie end of my eyebrow brush to kind of like flick away the mascara that's here. Oh my God, did you guys just see how easy that was to do? So I'm going to go on to lips next just because I kind of want to do lips to kind of see how that all looks and then just equalize, balance the eyes out, do the cheeks, that type of thing. And I went on Dose of Colors and they actually had a truffle like lip set i think in my last bridal makeup trial which was a little bit of a fail um i used truffle and i think i am going to use that on the day like i'm so sure of it like it's just my perfect color um but they actually had like a truffle set i'm just taking it out of the box and it actually comes with like a truffle lip gloss a truffle matte and then a truffle mousse um and then also the lip liner as well so i am going to give these a go and it'll be interesting to see if it actually looks the same as my old one. Because my old one was in the old packaging with like the white top. And I think now they have black tops on them. But I don't know. I guess there's only one way to find out. I'm going to use the lip liner first. Just because I don't really own many lip liners. And I kind of want to see what it all looks like with like a like lip liner that was made for it. If that makes any sense at all. So I'm going to start off with the Dose of Colors Truffle Lip Liner. I don't actually know if you can buy this like normally, or if you have to buy it in the set, I probably should have looked that up, but it is a retractable lip liner, which is really cool. And I'm just going to line my lips. It goes on super, super smooth. So that's the lip liner on. It's a really nice, like just pinky shade. And then here is the truffle lipstick. So this is the matte one. I don't want to use the mousse one just because that's not the one that I like had before. And I don't think that you can buy the mousse one separately. Like, I don't know. But anyway, this is it here. Mmm, smells exactly like my one. I'm so glad I bought a new one because the formula is so much like newer and like thinner and just nicer. Do they reformulate? Because this feels like a lot different. Not in a bad way, just it feels different. Or maybe mine's just so old. I feel like the lip liner didn't really help very much. It probably did, and I just haven't noticed it. But I might use, like, a MAC Whirl or something like that next time, actually. I'm just going to go in with a little bit of MAC Spice just around the lip line to add a bit more, like, depth. Just because I feel like that truffle lip liner wasn't as dark. I feel like my truffle is, like, slightly different to this one. Like, I feel like the color has changed. And I don't think it's because mine is older. Like, I actually see, like, a true difference. Like, this is my one, and this is, like, the new truffle. Oh, that's really disappointing. Like, it still looks nice, but it doesn't look like this one. Yeah, I think I much prefer it with, like, spice lip liner over the truffle lip liner. I feel like the truffle one 
matches the lipstick while I like to kind of go like a shade up or two. So yeah, I think I'll definitely use Spice Lip Liner over that one. And I'll probably just use that one if like I'm wanting like a lighter lip. So I'm going to be using blush. This is the Illamasqua Trumbull Blush. Um, some people are saying that Illamasqua is really, really hard to find for them. So I'll put a few links down below to where I buy mine. But this is in the shade Tremble. It's a powder blush. It kind of gives me the same vibes as that Dior blush that like everyone is raving about. But I'm just going to apply a little bit onto my cheeks. And I actually feel like this gives like the most beautiful like bridal flush. And I only just really tapped it. And it's honestly going so far on my face. I don't know if I like, I still prefer like a like shimmerier, like luminous blush, but I really love the color of this one. So I'm laying this one down first and then I might go over the top with like Dandelion or Rockatua. What do you guys think so far? Is there anything that you would have changed in my look already? I'm sure there probably has been like millions of things that you would have changed because, you know, everyone has their own like makeup style. And for some reason, I just like pat a little bit onto the tip of my nose. Now I'm just going to go in with the tiniest bit of Rockatua blush just to kind of give a bit more luminosity to like my blush. So I really love that the tremble kind of gives like the base color of what I want. But then Rockatua kind of like adds that little bit of luminosity to it. For highlighter, I'm going to be using the OMG Illamasqua highlighter. I feel like I haven't really found any others that give me like that bridal euphoric glow. And it really does just mesh in beautifully with my blush because it does have a bit more of a pinky tone to it. But yeah, if you guys haven't tried Illamasqua, I would honestly like highly recommend it. I got onto it like years ago when they were in the Maya in Town Hall, like in Sydney. And to be honest, I don't even know if they're still there. I don't think they are. But honestly, that's when I got hooked on the brand. Like I feel like it's just such an amazing brand, so underrated. And they just have such amazing products, especially powder products. I'm just going to add a little bit of my Sweet Tea bronzer because I feel like it's very blushed now. And I just want to add a bit of bronzer to balance it out because I love bronzer. It looks really harsh, but it also is because that's where my actual natural face contour is. So I don't really know how to soften that. To be honest, if this is how I looked on my wedding day, I wouldn't even be mad. Like I actually really, really like it. Like the lashes could be like a bit better. Like I feel like if I didn't put so much mascara on, but I don't mind it like in camera. I'm just going to take a little bit of my Mac Studio Fix in NC35 and I'm just going to try and clean up. And then I haven't really used this on camera much. I haven't really played around with this much at all, to be honest, but I'm going to use a little bit of mood light and I'm just going to put it like over like my blush area and just see how that looks just to kind of like add as like a little bit of a finishing touch. And then because one finishing powder isn't enough, I'm gonna go over the top with my Laura Mercier Candlelight Glow one, and I'm just going to brush that over my forehead and pretty much just everywhere that I just applied the other one. Okay, so I think that we are actually finished. I absolutely love, I'm looking into the mirror, I absolutely love how my makeup turned out. I really, really like it. I think it looks really, really nice in camera like on the camera. I feel like it looks really nice in real life. It looks like a very like blushing bride type of look, which is kind of the look that I'm trying to go for. I think that I've found at least most of the products that I'm going to use on the day, which is actually like making me feel so much more like relieved because my wedding is literally around the corner. Hopefully I get to film one more of these, if not a few more, um, just kind of like tweaking little things. But yeah, I definitely want to do another one using the same products, but cream contour and stuff like that. So we'll see how we go. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you would do anything differently, then leave it in the comments down below. And yeah, I hope you guys are staying safe and I will see you in my next video. Bye.